In this session, we're going to analyze a more complex model. Oil platforms, or offshore drilling platforms, are large structures used to drill and extract natural gas and oil that lie under the seabed. The model is fairly complicated, and there are several different parts that we need to build. Let's take a look at the drawing sheets of the model in detail so that we can develop a plan on how to create this model. First, let's identify the main parts that define the oil platform. The base platform, the floating base, the helipad, and the oil derrick. Now we can analyze them in detail. The base platform is a simple shape. For simplicity, we can start from a rectangular shape and then pull it to create the solid. Then we can plan to add the floating base that sustains the platform. The lower part of the platform is a rectangular prism that can be created with a simple pull operation. The two columns require the use of the blend tool to easily create a shape that transitions from the top to the bottom section. All the corners of the geometry can be rounded using the pull tool. Once one of the floats is created, we can mirror it with respect to the middle plane of the platform base to quickly complete the floating base. If we take a look at the floats, we can see that the four columns look like they are all a mirrored representation of each other. We can then create half of one of the floats, then the column, and complete the floating base with two simple mirror operations. Once our base structure is built, we can move to creating the helipad. First, we can extend the base so that it could support the helipad, simply adding a protrusion. Then, we create the bridge that holds the helipad with a simple pull operation. And last, we create the helipad using a hexagonal shape as the base for the prism. And then we can use a simple sketch and pull it along the perimeter of the helipad to create the safety protrusions. An oil platform cannot be an oil platform without the most characteristic part, the oil derrick. In order to create it, we need a good plan to avoid spending countless hours building it. First, we can create a vertical prism with a square base. Then we can use the shell option to create a hollow prism and sketch the beam structure on its sides. Last, we can use the sketches as cutting tools to remove the excess material and create the truss. Now that we have a plan on how to build the different parts, let's open a new design in space claim and create the model. Before starting, let's make sure that we're using the right units. Go to File, Space Claim Options, and select Units. Check that the type is set to metric and that the length is measured in meters. Make sure the sketch grid is set on the XY plane and then orient it in a plan view. Start the Rectangle tool and sketch the rectangle for the platform. Activate the option Define Rectangle from Center and create a sketch that's 80 meters high and 120 meters wide. Return to 3D mode and pull the rectangle up 5 meters. In the structure tree, right click the solid and select Move to New Component. Rename the component Base Platform. Let's move on to modeling the floating base. Select the bottom face of the platform and create a new sketch. Use the Move Grid tool to offset the sketch plane 41.5 meters in the negative Z direction. Use Plan View to reorient the sketch and press the letter Z on the keyboard to zoom to the extents. Use the Project to Sketch tool to select the top left corner of the platform and project the point onto your current sketch. Select the Rectangle tool and click the projected point as the start point and sketch a rectangle 22 meters high and 60 meters wide. Start the Pull tool and pull the rectangular profile 12 meters in the positive Z direction towards the platform. Double click an edge to select an edge loop. Hold Ctrl and repeat this process for all the edges on the model. A total of 12 edges should be selected. Hold Ctrl and click each of the four edges on the face located closest to the world origin. This will deselect them. Using the Pull tool, apply a 2.5 meter radius to all of the remaining edges. Select the top face of the rectangular solid and start a new sketch. Use the Move Grid button to offset the sketch plane one meter. Select the Rectangle tool. Zoom in to the bottom left corner of the solid. 
you can see the point which was projected earlier. Place the cursor over this point and tap the shift key to activate reference dimensions. Move the cursor to the right and specify the horizontal reference dimension as 15 meters. The vertical reference dimension should be zero. This should place the starting point of the rectangle. Now, create a sketch that's 22 meters high by 22 meters wide. Click the Pull tool and reorient the view to the home view. Select Add from the Pull tool options. Then click the square and pull down until the profile merges with the lower body. Rotate the model and create another sketch on the bottom face of the platform. Rotate the model so you're looking down at the float. Activate the Project to Sketch tool and select each of the four edges of the square. Orient the sketch in a plan view and press S on the keyboard to activate the selection tool. Use the Offset Curves tool to offset the top and bottom lines by 2.5 meters towards the center of the square. The shape should now be a rectangle measuring 22 meters by 17 meters. Use the Trim Away tool to remove any excess segments. Click and drag a box around the remaining four lines and use the Move tool to shift them 5 meters to the right. Switch to 3D mode and activate the Blend tool. Select the square face on the float and the corresponding face on the underside of the platform while holding Control. Check that the preview is OK and click the green check mark to accept the result. Start the Pull tool and double-click one of the edges on the blended portion of the model. This should select two edge segments. Hold Control and double-click the remaining three edges. Now press the spacebar and enter a value of 2.5 for the radius. The projected point that we used earlier is no longer needed, so select it from the structure tree and delete it. Right-click the solid and select Move to New Component. Name this component Float. Now start the mirror tool and select the cut face on the float as the mirroring plane. Then click the float body itself. This generates a mirrored model and completes one of the floats. Next, select the plane tool and click the Y axis on the world origin. This creates a plane. Start the mirror tool again and select the newly created plane. Then, in the structure tree, select the float component to mirror it to the other side. The floating base is now complete. Let's move on to creating the helipad. Right click on the base platform component and select activate component. Select the base platform side located along the negative x direction and create a sketch plane on it. Select the rectangle tool then click the top right corner of the platform as the starting point. Move the cursor towards the origin and create a rectangle that's 20 meters wide and with the same height as the thickness of the platform. Then use the pull tool to create a 20 meter protrusion. Right click the topmost component in the structure tree and select activate component. Create a rectangular solid to be the bridge. Select the top face of the platform and create a sketch Create a rectangle on top of the protrusion and make it 20 meters wide by 30 meters high. Switch back to 3D mode and use the pull tool to give this rectangular profile a height of 10 meters. Right click the new solid body and select move to new component and name this component bridge. Let's now sketch the helipad on top of the bridge. First, create a new component called helipad. Click the polygon tool and select the top face of the bridge. Using the shift key, specify reference dimensions of 15 meters and 10 meters from any of the corners to define the center of the polygon. Then move the mouse away. The numbers shown represent the diameter of the circumference inscribed within the polygon, the orientation angle, and the number of sides. Set 20 meters as the diameter and create a polygon with one of the two opposite edges laying on the edges of the bridge. Make sure that no parts of the hexagon lay outside the bridge. Start the pull tool and pull the sketch up two meters. Select the two side faces of the polygon 
that are parallel to the faces of the bridge. Then start a sketch. Reorient the model if necessary. Zoom into the helipad and start the line tool. Select any of the top corners of the polygon and create a line on the outer side with a length of 1.5 meters and an angle of 105 degrees. Switch back to 3D mode and select the pull tool. Select the line, then click the pull direction tool guide and select any of the vertical edges of the polygon solid to define the pull direction. Now, pull the line downward, negative 0.25 meters. With the pull tool activated, select the surface that we've just created. Select the sweep option in the pull menu, and double click any of the edges on the outer face of the polygon. If necessary, double click the other adjacent edge until you've selected the loop along the top of the polygon face. Once this is done, click the full pull button to create the safety protrusions. Now, let's complete the helipad by putting the characteristic H on the top face. Select the top face and start a new sketch. Reorient the view to the plan view and zoom in if necessary. Start the rectangle tool and select define rectangle from center. Then select the center point of the helipad. Make the rectangle 2.5 meters high and 3.5 meters wide. Then deactivate the Define Rectangle from Center option and using the Shift key, set the starting point of the new sketch 5 meters above the center of one of the vertical sides of the previous rectangle. Sketch a rectangle 3.25 meters wide and 10 meters high. Repeat the process on the other side to complete the letter H. Use the Trim Away tool to remove the lines in the center of the H and return to 3D mode. Select the H-shaped face and change the color of the face to yellow from the display menu. Now let's create the oil derrick. Right-click the top entry in the structure tree and select New Component. Name the new component Oil Derrick. Hold Control and select the X and Z axes, then go to Sketch Mode. Sketch a construction line vertically beginning at the center of the top face of the platform and make it 62 meters high. We'll use this later on. Reorient the sketch plane to the top face of the platform. Create a square that's 20 meters by 20 meters beginning at the world origin. Return to 3D mode and hide the base platform. Pull the square profile up 62 meters. Click the shell tool and click the top face of the tower. Enter a value of 0.5 meters. Then click the bottom face to remove that as well, leaving a hollow prism. Click select to exit the shell tool. Then select one of the vertical faces of the tower and create a sketch plane. Offset the sketch plane from the surface by an arbitrary distance. Reorient the view to the plan view and press Z to zoom extents. Activate the project to sketch tool and select the bottom edge of the tower. Press S on the keyboard to activate the Select tool. Then duplicate the line using the Move Copy operation. Start the Move tool, and holding Control, click and drag the handle to move the line vertically upward 5.7 meters. Zoom in to get a better view, then click the Line tool. Place the mouse cursor over the midpoint of the bottom line, and using the Shift key, Place the starting point of the line at negative 9.5 in the X direction and 0.5 in the Z direction. The end point should be at negative 0.5 and 5.7. Create a similar line on the opposite side of the center. Sketch a vertical line on the left and right sides to form a triangle. Using the Offset Curve tool, create a duplicate of each hypotenuse and move it 0.5 meters down towards the base. Click the Create Corner tool and close the gap at the top between the two new lines. Similarly, use Create Corner and close the gap between the offset lines and the baseline such that you get a closed triangle at the bottom. 
Use the trim away tool to eliminate all extra segments of the triangles, so only three distinct triangles are left. Press S and click and drag a box around the three triangles. Start the Move tool and select Create Patterns. Move the triangles up in the Z direction and set the spacing to 55.8 meters. The count should be 10. Press D on the keyboard to return to 3D mode. Expand the oil derrick in the structure tree and select the surface. This will be our cutting tool to generate the shape of the truss. Adjust the location of the move tool and place the center point on the vertical construction line we created earlier. Hold control and rotate the surface 90 degrees about the center axis in either direction. Press S to exit the move tool. Select one surface from the structure tree and click pull. Select the cut option and pull the surface through the entire tower. Repeat the process with the second surface. Now the base of the oil derrick is completed. For convenience, we will import the top portion of the derrick to complete the shape. The process to build it is roughly the same as the lower part, just on a set of inclined planes. Right-click the top entry in the structure tree and select Activate Component. Now let's load the top portion of the oil derrick into the design. Go to the Assembly tab and click the File button. Then open Oil Derrick Top. Press S on the keyboard to activate the Select tool. Select the Oil Derrick component from the Structure tree and start the Move tool. Position the Move tool on the bottom surface of the derrick. Then move the piece vertically using the Up To option and select one of the upper surfaces on the lower portion of the derrick. Ensure that the alignment is correct, then activate the Combine tool. Holding Control on the keyboard, click both bodies to merge them. This completes the oil derrick. Right-click in the background and select Show All. As additional steps, you can change the color of the different parts of the model from the Display tab in the Color menu. You can also add additional shapes to increase the level of detail on the oil platform. We've also created a model of a crane, which you can import into the assembly as well. You can make a copy of it to have a second crane and improve the look of the model. Congratulations, you've successfully completed the design of an oil platform.